So the PM7 and the PM10 have a really substantially sized selected channel. Uh, by adding the third screen to the surface on the PM5, the selected channel is much smaller. And one of the things you lose in that is there's only one gain knob on uh, the five and the three select right. channel. And how do you use, I mean, so you've got analog gain, you've got digital gain. How do you have one control for both of those functions? Yeah, it's a preference. It's really pretty much um, like it's set up in the uh, in the CL and QL series. So as a preference, um, you have the option here. You could make it an analog. Choose to have it an analog gain, which is the default. Um, the or you could say, hey, I just want it to be digital gain, and there's reasons when you'd want to do that, or you can let it auto detect. So if you let it auto detect, if it sees a AES or a Dante MADI input, that kind of thing it will jump over to on that channel when you select that channel and that'll become your digital gain control because there is no head amp in that case, right? Otherwise, it'll be analog. So if, let's say we're doing a front of house and monitors, it might be really good for me to not have the analog gain on my surface as a default. Maybe it's better if, you know, because you're going to control the head amps in this case. Maybe at my end, we set it to digital. So and then now, you won't have any control. That's right. I'd have to dig to do it. I can get there if I need to. If you step away and I need to take control, I can. Um, but because it's not a leader follower type of a situation, right? Everybody, we both would have control. But in any way, this case, if if it's just on one man operation or I should say one console on the network, auto analog gain or digital gain selection, I think works really well because then your knob will be what it needs to be for that particular channel. Another good thing to know is in preferences on that third tab there, um, screen options for gain shown in overview screen. The default is analog gain, but when something has a port default, I call it defaulty. In this case, I think this is a better option because when you're looking at that 12 channel overview, do you want to, what if you did have a, a Dante signal coming in here, an AES signal, if it's on analog gain, then it would, that whole head amp would disappear. So. I think that may be a better starting point in, in most cases. Yeah, I don't see any reason you wouldn't want to go go with that. Another thing that I noticed is missing from the selected channel on the five and three is a silt control. Yeah, with the condensed um, selected channel, like you say, there, there certainly is are, are fewer knobs and whatnot. So how can you do when you know do your silt control? So you could just use your touch and turn, right? But we have a function knob that's assignable to any of the channel encoders. So if, if I want it to be, it, it is currently that, whatever is amber is that, but if I wanted it to be this, for example, if I press and hold the function and touch a knob, it becomes that. So now, no matter what I select, it's going to be that. So this is my high gain, my high EQ gain. But if- And, and that's a global setting. That's not for each channel, right? It is for any selected channel. So in so a sense it's global, yeah. yeah, right. So, but if I want to go back and I was like, hey, I know I'm going to have a bunch of of uh, front end I want to work on with that silk, now I can select whatever channel I select and it's going to be, I have the dedicated knob there, yeah. That's great. Yep. Yeah. 